let's talk about crypto. Uh, well, some brutality in the crypto markets. Let's put this up there on the screen. Bitcoin falling below $20,000 for the first time since 2020. This is just a broad problem in the entire market, from Bitcoin to Ethereum. On Saturday, at one point, Bitcoin was down to 17000 which is the lowest that they've seen in well over two and a half years. You also had Coinbase, the, one of the largest trading platforms for crypto assets, laying off 18% of its staff, citing the recession and crypto decline specifically as the reason. The bank Celsius, remember, we talked about previously, which was pausing all of its withdrawals. And also there's a uh, hedge fund, which as a result of both crypto and the broader stock market decline had uh, had major challenges. So you put all these together, presaged by that Terra USD coin, the decoupling of the stable coin that we talked about previously. And you see a contraction of almost $7 trillion in wealth in decline that you've seen over just the last couple of months. All that put together just spells real doom times, I think, for some of the biggest froth in the crypto community, both from NFTs to some of the high interest loans that people were taking out. Actually, I saw an interesting story about how with crypto, and I warned about this before, people, which is that people were staking their crypto on behalf of cash loans, so the, based on the pr present value of their asset. Mm. Well, then the oh, banks no. and other these crypto banks started doing margin calls once oh, the no. asset declined, and nobody would pay up on their margin call. And because all of this isn't, this, none of this is regulated under the SEC or FDIC, and so they don't have a lot of, I mean, they have le some legal recourse, and they can try and settle it eventually through lawsuit, but you either have the cash on your balance sheet or you don't, and and that was part of the reason why they had to pause that. We'll point this uh, New York Times story up on the screen, which everybody's trying to point to, you know, what exactly is happening in the crypto markets. And they're pointing really to tether the decline and the unpegging away from the stable coin as a real indicator of just where so much of the froth had been concentrated. And I think this is really a peel back, both in the economy and also in crypto, back to fundamentals. I mean, five years ago or so, when I got into the crypto community, I told this before, it was about censorship resistant money, and it was about trying to hedge inflation in places like Argentina and others, where they have like 60% hyperinflation to have a semi-stable asset that people can conduct commerce in. But then it became like blockchains, which became architects for all of this complicated financial instruments that Wall Street was using, mm -hmm. massive loans were flying around. And look, for a time, mega billionaires are being made. You know, Sam Bank, there are hundreds of billionaires that became minted in just the last two years. I guess they're not billionaires anymore, but were on paper at least at some point. So there was a lot of real wealth being generated. And then the decline in that from NFTs and more my concern is not with the people who are billionaires and now 100 millionaires. It's with normal folks. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, on Reddit and others, people... Specifically, many influencers and celebrities like Paris Hilton and like Reese Witherspoon and other people were chilling NFTs to their uh, to their fans and getting paid huge money in yeah. order to do so. By the way, they're getting paid in cash, just so we all know. Yeah, and, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, like, for sure. Those people are getting paid in cash and convincing people to put their life savings into non-fungible tokens. I'm not even an unbeliever in the underlying technology of it, but the sheer matter is, is that when you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on these platforms, you're going to get ho caught holding the bag. And uh, unfortunately, that is what happened to a lot of average people. They also point to uh, Latin American countries, which were buying either Bitcoin or crypto currencies as part of their balance sheets as heads against inflation, El Salvador being one. Well, they're in serious trouble now because yeah. of the decline in asset. These are developing countries which need that money. You know, They are not the reserve currency in order to pay for different expenditures and other things in their own country. So the decline has had very real world consequences, even for, um, I saw a story on Terra specifically, again, I'm, you know, in Argentina and some other countries where they have hyperinflation, people put their life savings in these assets because they said, at least I can invest in something which is pegged to the US dollar, which is more stable than my own currency. And now they're left with almost nothing. So it wiped, it, it wiped many normal people's savings completely out. Now, that's why you shouldn't go in on any asset class, but there you go. I mean, a lot of, that's true. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, and a lot of the people involved here were ultimately just fraudsters and hucksters. Yeah, I mean, people, there were, yeah. you know, tons of just pump and dump schemes and rug pulls and all kinds of just outright fraud. Um, not to mention part of this uh, article about Tether, which I had actually followed before, is the fact that, you know, the whole idea of Tether is that it is backed by 
U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the claim. And then Letitia James, who's the Attorney General of New York, who's gone out gone after all kinds of different people, um, Amazon and Facebook and Trump and all kinds of others. She said, "I don't think this is true." And turns out it wasn't true. Um, there was also a uh, CFTC investigation that found out of their sample time frame um, that they were looking at, only about a quarter of, a t- of the time did Tether actually have sufficient cash reserves. Now they say, okay, we have transparency now, and sure, a lot of our reserves are held in commercial paper, which isn't right. totally liquid, but we're working to change that. There was a bit of a run, because this, this is effectively, even though there's lots of like complicated jargon here and newfangled ideas, it ultimately comes down to this is basically a bank, and there was a run on the bank, and they were able to get through that even though it depegged for a while. So they're saying, hey, mm-hmm. that means we're good to go. Um, but there's still a lot of questions over whether if you know things continue to crash, I should say, crypto is, I think, up a little bit this morning from the lows that we experienced just recently. But if there is a serious crash and there's an even more serious run on Tether, are they going to be able to ultimately stand up? And this is one of the, the sort of bedrock underpinning of the entire crypto world. So if Tether were to, were to fall, you'd have massive spillover effects into all kinds of other things. And um, so that's the part that, that they're looking at here. I think the kicker to this article kind of says it all, because as you said, you know, the idea, I I really understand the appeal of the initial idea, right? I I genuinely do. And for a long time, I was very crypto sort of just agnostic Mm -hmm. because it was interesting, right? And I think in certain situations, like in in countries that are kind of destabilized, hyperinflation, whatever, the whole idea, okay, this will be a hedge against inflation. Well, we can see very much now that that is not the case. Um, The original concept is this will be an actual medium of exchange. Well, it turned into just a massive speculative asset that is not backed by anything. And I know a lot of um, crypto believers will say, well, the U.S. dollar is also just based on an idea. But that's not true. We have the largest, like, the largest military in the world is backing the U.S. dollar. The U.S. government is not amazing these days, but the United States of America isn't nothing. So it is a very different scenario here. And ultimately, to the point of a lot of this just became about gambling in a casino and finding the you know next greater fool, the quote at the end of this piece, they say, everyone's freaking out. Like, oh my God, I lost my life savings, said Mr. Collins, who founded Tether with Mr. Pearson, now runs a crypto venture called Block V. That's a tragedy. But it's just as much of a tragedy when someone says, I went to a casino and lost my life savings. That doesn't mean let's regulate casinos out of existence. So even their advocates are basically comparing it to a casino right now. By the way, casinos, extremely highly regulated yeah, also. That's true. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. I mean, there's the Nevada Gaming Commission and all the kinds yes. of oversight, even though I do think a lot of those are very exploitative. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it was speculative. And one of the warnings always at the top was, if you get in, you better be willing to lose it all. I don't think a lot of people were actually told that message. They just saw people making extraordinary amounts of wealth. And I think a lot of these people, specifically influencers and others who were pushing their average person into some of these assets without understanding any of the underlying risk, yeah. that was the major problem. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure anytime I've advocated Bitcoin, I've been like, listen, I've at a certain point been down up to 100%. And uh, that's something that you should know. The day that I bought Bitcoin, I anticipated losing every single dollar of it. But I was like, you know, this is kind of interesting. I didn't do it to make money. I I was like, this is a cool project. It's an interesting idea. And the idea of censorship resistant money, especially whenever we point to, you know, the Canadian protests and others with crypto, although the government did end up uh, seizing that, just showed me. I was like, huh, that's a, a, a cool use case. But if you if you did it in order to try and go number go up, it's like well then that's equivalent to investing in some penny stock scheme. Or yeah, something like well, that. and even some of the idealism turned out. A lot of the people involved, you know, they they said what they thought was convenient for their own bank account. So like Sam Bankman Freed, for example. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're truly invested in like the libertarian ideal, I would think that going and influence peddling with the Democratic Party and other powerful political officials yeah. kind of anathema to the best case for that worldview. And yet that's exactly what he was in the process of doing. I think ultimately Stoller makes a case for this in a piece that posted over the weekend in order to make sure that when the bottom falls out, 
their behinds are ultimately protected. Uh, they didn't manage to pull that off in time. There was an incredible, um, I recommend, uh, apparently there was a, it was controversial, the piece that Stiller put out, but yeah. I think it's worth I watching and like you can judge for facts. yourself. But he does have a clip in there that's pretty extraordinary of one of these big boosters who's like, take all your life savings and put it in crypto. The smartest thing you can do is put everything you have in crypto. And if you don't have, mortgage your house, take out credit cards. You need to spend all day, every day thinking of how you can get every single penny you possibly can into crypto. Like that's the level of insanity and irresponsibility and just, I mean, it, that's, it's so wrong to say that to anyone about literally anything, let alone something as speculative as crypto. Yeah. So It would be wrong to say that about the dollar, too. Okay. Anything. Right. Literally anything. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.